was working ranger for 27 years. Yeah. And that's why I'm following my father's footsteps. Yeah. This Learning on Country program is the only program that's valuable to our kids in the bush. It's growing and it's, it's I, I like to see it grow more in the future. Nestled in the shade of a rock shelter, a few hours' drive from the community of Manangrida in northern Australia's Arnhem Land, school students, teachers and trainers, Indigenous rangers and elders have come together in a class with a difference. Um, we might find a burrow, something like that, that tells us that there's something there. So They're part of the Learning on Country program. It's a school curriculum that blends the old with the new, combining the oldest knowledge about land management in the world with the latest in Western education. Students complete the Certificate 2 in land management and graduate Year 12, there's an employment pathway through the Rangers who we're in partnership with. It's a way of utilising traditional knowledge with the students on country but bringing it back into that Western school system. But you get a lot more outcomes out of it because all the kids have got context of what we do out bush. Last year, as the impact of coronavirus affected students around Australia, Cedric Ankin finished his studies here on country. He achieved vocational qualifications and graduated Year 12. He's one of a growing number of Aboriginal students in the Northern Territory successfully completing high school through learning on country. I like being in school and I graduate yeah. and to help other kids because they don't know, yeah, to learn about skill and knowledge and culture. I'm happy with them when I'm doing so one and two, three, but really happy. Students want to be involved in this program, they want to be um, working with rangers, they want to be learning about their own country and their, and their culture and language. They want to get out and do hands-on experiential learning. Her father used to grab these plants now and then go put them in that water mm -hmm. and then that's when it, that fish would die. Mm -hmm. Not die, but it'll take that oxygen Ew. and then that fish will float up. But it's the unique partnership between Ew. Indigenous Ew. ranger groups, elders and schools is an integral part of the program, supporting the transfer of Indigenous knowledge and offering pathways to employment. For Cedric and Christina, it's a winning formula. I'm here now, just working with rangers and learning on country. God, Bush and learn about them, how, I mean, like teaching us and going walk, telling us the story. Teachers say the training now provides a stepping stone into the workforce. Up until now, if they graduated, then they'd have to go up to the ranger shed on their own and ask for, ask for a position. And that would be, that could be quite intimidating. Learning on country, is a really good way for our kids to achieve their goal, to be a ranger what they want to be, go back and look after their country. Analysts say an education system that values Indigenous knowledge and culture is the secret to its success. In the remote Arnhem Land community of Manangrida, eight learning on country students graduated Year 12 in 2018, with five becoming full-time rangers. Overall, it has contributed to up to 40 student graduations over the last three years. It's real work and it has real purpose. So that, that then provides this level of engagement and a reason to learn. And so we see that attendance and enrolment goes up. But the flip side of that is that community are so involved in the educational process. And when community is engaged, then kids want to be involved. Really, the outcomes that we get out here and the other Learning on Country sites, their school-based outcomes that we're all achieving, um, it's, it's all there, you know. And having Year 12 students and remote Aboriginal communities graduate, that's just, that's, yeah, enough, enough said, really. 
These results have seen widespread federal and territory government support for the program's expansion. From the pilot in Maningrida, Yirrkala, Lanapoi Homelands and Galawinku in 2013, Learning on Country has now expanded to 15 communities, with more than 700 middle and senior students enrolled in core activities last year. So there has been a steady groundswell of confidence in the system to deliver. Whereas without force and coercion and sort of pushing people into buses or whatever, um, there is a real encouragement from another point of view. Learning on country's popularity is evident from the 15 schools who came together in Darwin in April. Lipia Munungur from Yirrkala in northeast Arnhem Land was involved in piloting the program. He says education that adopts a two-way approach has long been an aspiration of Aboriginal communities. Learning and country is the education that the old people wanted. They, um, that's their vision, that was their dream. Because when they went back to the tribal lands, as my Yappa was saying, when the land, uh, Lanapur homeland movement began, the first thing that they wanted was school. The old people wanted the school. The program sits under the Northern Land Council, which represents traditional owners in the top end. But that wasn't the original plan. When the four pilot communities proved the program's worth, they applied for and won millions in federal funding and formed a corporation to manage its expansion. But the former Federal Minister for Indigenous Affairs, Nigel Scullion, stepped in. We got word that the minister had just decided to hand the program over and the money over to the Northern Land Council. And it was a bit of a shock to everybody. And it was a bit sad that the people who'd piloted that and nursed it to that point lost, you know, lost the ability to then carry it on. Paul Joseph says despite disappointment over the decision of the former minister, there's continued enthusiasm for the program to continue to expand under the Land Council. It makes me feel happy because in the past they didn't recognise this curriculum. Now that they recognise and they have made this curriculum available for our kids to learn back in the, in the bush. Back on Stone Country near Maningrida, Laura continues to show the group the power of plants. They're far from the questions and doubts of some educators in schools. It is disappointing that some educators, principals, have had the opportunity to have learning on country at their school and in their school. And the only way they'd adopt it was if they controlled it. Um, the rangers didn't have any kind of big say in it and at best to treat it like a school excursion. And that is tragic because that's the last thing in the world that these are. Learning on country and some of those programs are, sit well and truly within some of those really great examples of programs that are engaging um, children and young people. And where we as a system can provide some more guidance around you know, evidence-based programs that are really getting results, um, we will continue to do that. Last year, the program received continued federal funding of just over $7 million until December next year. Beyond then, it's unknown. But there are hopes the funds will continue and over longer periods of time. For the learning country to be successful, it needs to have a long life. It needs to go over a period of years. I've seen rugs pulled out from underneath man and greeter kids more times than I can count. It'd be nice to think that this program is going to be there into the future so that them and their kids can all benefit from it. There are also hopes that funding can increase so that other schools can get on board. So Laura was just saying that it's, it's, she really likes it because she likes to keep telling all her stories and passing her knowledge on and she likes to see that our kids keep on coming back. 
This is about acknowledging Aboriginal people's um, ownership of this country, an occupancy of this country, a knowledge of this country, and, and heart for this country. And that, to me, is really one of the big things that learning on country is, you know, it's opening a crack in the door for a whole lot of kids who otherwise might not have that opportunity. Our teachers make us happy and, yeah. and, and brave. brave. They always support us and they're teaching us so well and supporting us.